I'm really happy to see a uh, lot of faces in the class, especially in the live classroom, because the last batch that we took, everything was online. And I think things were very difficult for the students as well as the faculty, because when you don't see a person's face, you really don't understand whether the concept is clear or not. Anyway, so first of all, uh, I'm very happy to see all of you. And uh, let me just introduce myself. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I am Rajita, and uh, I am here to handle your uh, optional classes. The entire optional classes I'll only be handling for you. So UPSC has been a pretty long journey for me. It's like I'm almost uh, 18 years into this field, but uh, into teaching, it's like almost uh, 14 years. And uh, UPSC teaching is uh, kind of nine to 10 years right now. And I started with taking classes with uh, sociology as an optional. That's where I started taking classes for civil services, okay? So as in when we decide to uh, take up the optional as such, then maybe I'll talk to you further about myself. Now let me not waste your time, okay? So some of you might have decided on sociology. Some of you might be having the confusion whether you should pick up the subject or not. So first I'll just tell you what is the plan. Uh, I'll keep you here for an hour maximum, not more than that. Uh, so today we'll be having an orientation and in this orientation i'll tell you what is the nature of the subject uh, what are the kind of things that you should get exposed to and uh, certain things which are required for the optional and then um, we'll have a q a session wherein i'll just take up your questions and i'll try to give as much as possible uh, my own opinions about it and after that, uh, we'll be starting regular classes from Monday. That is from 18th only, we'll be starting the classes, okay? So after today, you'll have a week's break, time for you to decide. And those of you who have already taken the decision, I'll tell you what to do in this one week. And uh, then we meet for classes, we'll be starting from Monday, okay? So fine. Uh, so first and foremost, sociology as a subject, some of us, we already have the exposure. Some of us, we really don't know anything about the subject. I was one such person. I did not know anything about humanities because entirely in school and all, I have only taken science subjects. So exposure to sociology is coming only with UPSC. So if that is your first doubt, I don't have any background in sociology, whether it will suit me, I am your category. After that, you kind of start developing love for this subject. That's how it is. It kind of motivates you. It kind of, uh, it kind of keeps you hooked. You kind of understand what's happening around you. The same thing which you viewed, you start viewing it from a very different perspective. So I'll just give you an example. Very recently, we were watching this movie, Vikram, which is a movie in Tamil. Obviously, it has come in multiple languages as well, thanks to OTT, right? So Hotstar has kind of released it on July 8th. So if you take this movie, there is something about uh, the revival of a hero, isn't it? After a very long time, a person is getting a commercial break. There is something about gun violence, something which the US society has been dealing with. So when we see the movie as a movie, we kind of see the star, we kind of enjoy the movie, there's kind of entertainment in that. But then when you start understanding why exactly the movie is there, what do people love, uh, why PUBG was banned, why people start internalizing all these values onto themselves, you, start a, you kind of start getting a very different perspective as to what exactly is this topic that they're kind of dealing. What is this uh, spying? How does a nation work with another nation? You start getting a lot of perspectives. So a simple movie, which you've only watched as an entertainment before, starts giving you new meanings. That's what the subject does to you. You start identifying, you start relating. Next, we'll take a small thing. Huh? You kind of call a person or you kind of text a person. The person doesn't reply to you. Normally, it happens you know, every two minutes, we'll keep checking our phone. We sent a message to a person. Why the person is not responding? Many a time, oh, is that person angry with me? Have I done something wrong? We kind of get a lot of questions. Sometimes only we say, oh, maybe that person was actually very busy. And so maybe the person was driving or riding. And so the person did not respond. We, we have so many meanings that we can get. But then first, what do we think? Maybe that person is very angry. That's why the person didn't respond. And then what we do? We keep calling the person again and again. Some of us, we do have that habit, right? But then socially changes our perception about things. That a person can be doing multiple things and because of that, you need not think bad about a person. You don't get to judge a person. You, you, can't, you don't come up with good or bad. You don't come up with being a judge. You kind of look a person as it is. 
okay so these are the practical things that you get out of the subject all right so that's how it has changed me as a person from not having a background in sociology to developing some kind of a background now there will be some other people who studied something from humanity right from school for you obviously this is a cup of cake you're already having that pers uh, you know the way of looking into things so maybe this is only going to be something like a reiteration but then what is the difference is when i do a ug or a pg or even a phd in sociology i do it for an academic work but here we are doing it for a competitive exam so the level is just ba honors level so even if you start from now 3 to 4 months into the subject it that much of reading is enough to clear the upsc exam so the way we'll be doing this preparation is not to get a phd in sociology but to clear the examination our objective will be very very clear so the conceptual understanding plus doing things on your own to deal with the examination that's how we will be discussing okay so let me go into what is there in the subject so there are two papers each paper is for 250 marks paper 1 has 10 units and paper 2 it is divided into three portions and each of these things are some of the subjects are very different some of it is very correlated okay so this is what is the topic that you have the 10 units that i told you it is there in the optional paper 1 this is paper 1 okay so the first unit it introduces you to the subject the second unit is it takes you one step ahead as to when the subject was actually developing how to study the subject some people told us because subjects like physics chemistry philosophy they were all there before sociology this subject came in only in 1839 after that only this came so it's pretty young so there have been so many things which have come up as inputs to create the subject so how to do this subject third thing is what are the ways that we study the subject in detail we will be going like for example you would have recently come up uh, across something in the paper called national family health survey 5 no ma'am now only newspaper only i'm just opening and seeing some of you like today only i started class and you're telling something in the news okay there is something called as census we all know that every 10 years they are taking that so they come to each and every house and they ask us all our details and all the details is put into something and they analyze that so what do they do they get data from us and the data is kind of analyzed put into some format now what you do here if you're going to do it for sociology that is going to be third unit that's all okay so survey is a method that we are doing that survey if you do here that is what is the third unit yeah it's as simple as that fourth unit It, you just get a little deeper here there are some six people who have laid the foundation for sociology three of three of these people who are from europe three of these people are who are from america because before it came to india say there were a lot of research work which happened in those countries so we'll be introducing ourselves to those people what they have said but the lucky thing here is if you only understand what they have told as the concept it is enough you don't need to put it exactly in their words and all that so for example there is someone called as karl marx now this karl marx has told something about capitalism very good told something about class told something about uh, okay something which is applied very recently you would have heard about uh, uh nationalism right even recently there was a telugu movie which was discussing about it what is that no ma'am we don't watch movies and all they are discussing about the red corridor and all that naxal how people become sympathizers to naxal right so what is naxalism based out of it is based out of something which is like revolting against the ways and means of the state so karl marx had written something about it so it's like what you find today what this guy had written 200 years back all right so like that what is the thinker say is it practically applicable today or not that's what you get out of this this unit is very important because we get 50 marks in the examination from here so the first three units each of these units what is the weightage and all once we go into the classes we will discuss 
But as of now, you'll remember that unit four is quite very important. Fifty marks, five zero marks comes out of it. Okay, that means two twenty markers and one ten marker comes out of it. And how much ever you kind of avoid, you can't avoid writing these three questions. That's how the nature of the paper will be. Fifth unit. This is something about how do we group ourselves in the society? Like uh, we say, uh, we get a community certificate, right? We get something called as caste certificate. right so what is this caste what is this race what is this gender right today we we discuss about um, homosexuality we talk about homo normativity we talk about heteronormativity we kind of discuss all these things post the supreme court judgment we said there has been a decriminalization of homosexual marriages but still homosexual marriages are not legal in india so some nations in the world they permit it so how does this concept of gender come in is transgender a simple word or does it just have one meaning right we look at a person we say there's a this person is a transgender but we understand it's not a transgender there could be a transsex there could be a cisgender there could be multiple connotations that are involved in this we kind of get exposed to that fine then race so we've heard in history about how there was this always a uh, discussion about black and white common things if you see when you take a chess board and you have the black and white coins there say the white moves first why does the white coin have to move first why why not the black coin why does the person who has the white make the first move what is it based out of you start thinking is there some symbolism associated with it why is it only black and white why can't i have red and blue color chess coins no ma'am online when we play we'll have all that but all the coins that i've seen they look like this isn't it so we start asking a lot of questions there are some practical applications of what we see around us then we talk about all these things so these are all the words that we have under stratification mobility so you would have heard people telling that see we send everybody to school we have given right to education but just because we sent a person to school does that person get the equal opportunity we give equal input to everyone but everyone we give the common input but the way the person receives the input will be different why how is it different personally biologically i might be different right my circumstances might be different my access to resources might be different i might be sitting under a street light and reading i might not have power in my house and i might be reading I might not have internet connection all through. Sometimes we do that, no? The data patala. Data is not enough, so I'll not do a video call. I'll do only an audio call. Why is data not enough? I did not manage my two GB data properly. I might have watched some serial more. So, for something important that I need in the day, I might not have, right? But then we have a limitation of these resources. So resources, how do we use them? How do people get the access for it? all this is obviously going to change and is that person actually having a movement this movement is not what we say as migration this movement what we say as mobility is when my name comes on the list of the upsc in that one day my life changes completely i get a mobility it's not just the mobility for me it's a mobility for the people in my family my friends we find people celebrating that isn't it why because that one moment can change people's generations lives all together isn't it that is what is mobility it's not simply moving from one place to another moving from one place to another is some other kind of mobility what we call as physical mobility this we say as social mobility so that is what we discuss here fine now in class we will be going up to this as per the order as soon as we finish this we will go to paper 2 okay because the correlative portions begin from here in paper 2 that is in indian sociology which we have in paper 2 first is like we have thinkers in paper 1 like i told you no karl marx like that there are many people like that in indian sociology we had our own people who started studying indian society who spoke about various things that we have here how to look at indian society and all that right so that is what we have in perspectives there we call it as thinkers here we are not using the same name we are using some other name but it's the same concept 
impact of the colonial rule so this is the impact of history that we have on sociology now you start understanding from here various subjects we are having as a mixture in sociology so that is one of the reasons why studying it becomes very easy i know something in gs i know a little bit of history i know a little bit of economics i know a little bit of polity all that is applied here i can easily correlate so here impact of colonial rule is what we studied in history we start looking at it from sociology that means uh, we uh, discuss about tribal movements uh, worker movements women movements all these names you would have studied in history here what happened because of that consequences of it how did the society change because of it we start discussing all that okay then once we get an idea about what all is there in indian sociology then we will do this portion what is this portion yeah fourth unit we have and second unit that we have caste system what we studied as social stratification in paper 1 we have an applicative portion here called caste system so we'll do this together then we will do social classes because there are also class here are also class so we will not study as two stand alone paper 1 fully i'll finish paper 2 full it doesn't work like that you have to study it correlatively only then we can cross the 270 mark so ma'am 300 300 it, if it happens it's good because every year 300 might not be the case because this year and the previous year if you take 270 280 is what the top 50 people have got so one or two odd people get it that might not be the average 300 happens when they decide to increase the mark for the optional that is where all they are giving 12 marks there they give 14 marks where all they are giving 5 marks they decide to give 6 marks then the 300 will happen so what normally will be a 270 will become 300 automatically when upsc's marking pattern changes so first drop this i will get 300 if they give only you will get okay what you need to do is among people who are writing sociology from india i should come within the top 10 percentile so normally we have 1600 to 1700 students who will be writing mains with sociology looking into the previous upsc report so if i come within say 160 people or the 170 people in india from that subject i'll definitely get into the top 100 if i come within the top 250 i come within the first two or three choice services depending upon my category of competition so your bandwidth is to come within the top 250 out of people who write sociology from india that should be the way you start thinking so that means if you ever you have a doubt this subject is better or that subject is better i think i have answered that question better is always what is better for you you only have to decide done okay so once we are done with these two correlative portions then we will once again go back to paper 1 work and economics slide economics whatever we study what is the impact of that in sociology that means what about labor code today say july 1st onwards we have introduced something called as an industrial relations code labor code has changed that means you would have heard people telling hybrid work four days you work Three days are going to be holidays for you, but those four days you have to work twelve hours a day instead of eight hours. Five days you work a little more, but you will get three days completely off. So some things are changing. People are working in multiple companies. So what is that? How does it impact the money of a person? COVID has told us a lot of things, isn't it? You don't work in only one company. You work in two, three companies. Even if they shut down one company, you'll get the so money source from another. we studied about savings and its importance so like this the terms which are important for people we'll have that in the sixth unit okay so as and when we finish this the portion in paper 2 we will finish politics and society name itself you can understand whatever is the influence of polity governance public administration etc like party system democracy movements protest agitation revolution all this that we hear no green revolution information technology revolution like this some terms you know we keep on hearing right so what is the impact of that on people eighth unit religion this is impact of philosophy on sociology that means you would have again heard recently they have they have 
excavated certain things right they have found out uh, that uh, there is a shivling that was found in yanwapi mosque so that became a controversy and then there was a lot of questions regarding is there a religious polarization happening in the society is it something that we need to talk about right we we have a lot of questions isn't it and then supreme court says something then there was something called as the hijab row and we talk, we discussed about whether it is a woman's right to wear the hijab or is it something which is imposing like patriarchy on her so why should a woman clothe herself in a particular way does she want to be that way or is the society asking her to be that way so that's the debate that we have like if, if i want or is somebody else asking me to do so we discuss some term called as religious feminism shabari mala entry into shabari mala right so you don't let menstrual uh, women who are in their menstruation cycle to enter into the premises we discussed about a sanathan brahmachari right you you discuss about some terms like that the supreme court also came up with something like that so what is the meaning of all these things in everyday life how does it impact people you take tribal societies they have their own gods if you take non tribal societies they have their own gods religions are so complex and more and more you say no i won't talk about religion not talking about religion itself is talking isn't it that i don't have an opinion is itself an opinion that's how we are right hey don't ask me about that when you say that means what you don't want to tell that means you have some opinion that opinion is don't ask me isn't it so what is the impact like that right and then the ninth unit this is about family how is the family system changing because today we talk about live in relationships we discuss about patchwork families patchwork families means what um say for example there is a a married man uh, and his children and he takes a divorce there is another married woman she is also taking a divorce and then they remarry and then there's a new family which is like all brought together it's like literally a patch up that you have created so now there is a new family with people who do not have blood relation as mother and uh, father but literally you call the other person as a mother you so you talk about social father biological father we have a lot of concepts like this similarly with surrogacy with ivf like lot of things have changed because the way we look at family the way we look at children all this has actually changed right so that all is what we have in the ninth unit and like from the sixth unit we will be doing it together only what is here in paper 1 we will finish immediately we'll do so world what we do we say in india how it is like that we'll be going correlated and the last unit that we have is social change so how does education change the society how does technology change the society so you talk about um, uh, say recently you would have uh, you would have heard that we exports were banned you would have heard about southeast asian nations saying that we will not let uh, uh, palm oil export similarly some terms like this like some country saying no we will import this some country saying we why do they talk about all this we live in a globalized world we trade in a basket of currencies so we are dependent on the other person other country for example our covid vaccines when we developed the first time we developed the vaccine we took the formula and we customized it for us isn't it so we are dependent on some other group of nations as such and some other nations are dependent on us so we study about dependency concept right so that is what we have in the 10 units so this is what is there in the portions so one part of it is theoretical one part of it is completely correlative and practical what you see around you is what you will be studying here right exclusively there are some units in paper 2 that is this tribal communities in india so this is uh, studied in detail in anthropology in sociology it is a small unit anthropology it's like a little bigger tribal societies are studied in detail for us it's only about tribal policy something unique about uh, the ways tribe people integrate with the non tribal part like that cultural changes whatever is happening but it is also quite an important unit we we study it here separately rest all is then this portion rural and agrarian transformation of india this is very unique to indian sociology alone we have something like what are the land reforms that we have done um 
then green revolution rural development programs poverty alleviation programs are they successful or not if they failed what did we learn from those failures like that we have a unit and this one uh, population dynamics population dynamics again it's pretty unique because we study completely about indian population alone we don't have this in the world perspective so some units are exclusive for paper one like four units are exclusive for paper one some four or five units are exclusive for paper two, rest is all correlated. That's how it is, okay? Now, if in case you need to choose sociology, what are the things that is must, okay? First is syllabus itself is like from scratch only. You don't have a background, still you can make something out of it. So, there's, it is like from the beginning, it will be started and it will take you to the level what it is needed, okay? Obviously, there's a very high clearance rate from sociology because normally when we take any optional subject, this one subject, it is like whoever goes, not everyone will pass, not everyone will fail. One standard percentage will keep on clearing. So, it varies between 16 and 19 percentage. But it is always like that. You will never have a time where it, whoever writes mains passes and whoever writes main fails. That never happens. So, it's something like which is very what do you say? Fail safe bargain that you do, right? Okay, you put in well, you do good, you will get. It is like that. Limited syllabus. If you are only preparing sociology, three months is enough. If you are going to prepare sociology with something else, then obviously you will need to take five to six months to prepare. Only that is with GS when you are preparing. To get the background about it, it will take you six months. It will take double the time. Okay, this is something which might interest a group of people. If you want, you can repeat what is there in whatever material you are reading, if you can. If you can't, you write the concept in your own words without changing the meaning, then it is still okay, fine. So, the keywords are important, but the way you understand it, you can write it in your own words. Why? Because if you take India, many of the people would have written sociology in English and also in the regional languages. So, obviously, literature is available in multiple regional languages. So, you are going to write it in a medium that you choose. So, obviously, there is going to be some interpretation, things that we are going to do. And if you take world scholars, they would have written in French and German. And many thinkers would have translated them onto English. We are taking from the English sources and then we are reading. Those thinkers are not alive. If they are alive, then maybe they will say, oh, no, I didn't say that. Right? Okay. Reference books readily available and textbooks textbooks so there are very few textbooks that you have to read we will we'll talk about that and of course you get the material you get three books totally so like i've revised it just before i went in for the break so it is like two books for paper one and one book for paper two so it's like from all the important sources that we have you just put it together and it's like you read something standard and you consolidate it with your textbook with the class notes that you are making, it is more than enough for you to get a very, very decent score provided you apply that onto your paper when you are writing. Reading alone is not enough, isn't it? You need to translate it onto paper so that another person is able to get that you have understood the concept. And syllabus, I will cover everything. Like whatever is there in the syllabus, every single word, every single unit will be covered for you. You don't need to worry about that. Nothing will be just left off. Right? Now come to the challenges if you are a person who writes broken language, you know, like some people have this point of writing hanging points. I tell you what is this hanging point? Um, I didn't come today. That's a full sentence, right? So if you are making hints out of this, you will simply write two to three words out of it. Now you take a complete sentence. Um, India did not respond to a gesture which was made by China on the border. Like you would have heard that Indian army is recruiting Mandarin speaking personnel to train our army personnel. You would have read, no? Yesterday's paper, it was there. So, we are not alienating ourselves from understanding what Mandarin is. We understand that if you want to work in the border, especially a sensitive area, we need to have some idea about what the Chinese culture is. Tibet is a very unique part. China is another unique part. And China is also not very... It's as diverse as we have here in India. So, I need to have some understanding if I speak that particular language, isn't it? So, when I want to 
tell this i need to tell it in a sentence so you should have this thing of writing it in sentences simple language simple sentences are enough but if you just write keywords and leave it point 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 it doesn't work you have to write it in a sentence so how do i understand whether i get this sentence writing take the 12th standard sociology ncrt you take sociology don't take sociology still everybody has to study it for gs1 okay you take that you see if you can understand that language see if you can replicate that ncrt language if you can do that that is enough ability to write in those that kind of a language and obviously in many parts that we have in southern india our exposure to science and our exposure to science based subjects is pretty higher but if you take in the northern part of india and the northeastern part of india and the eastern part of india there the exposure is there for humanities people take up a lot of humanities subjects so down here in the south this exposure is little tilted it's a little different so there's always this fear factor i haven't studied about these things in school will i be able to pick up right that factor is there that's because you don't know to know it just go through the ncrt you can easily get it okay two ncrts are there for 12th standard just go to the e part shala download it from there and you read it online itself or if you have the textbook take the hard copy of the textbook and just go through it that is enough that level is enough okay fine all right so what do you get when you take up the classes so first syllabus i've already talked to you about second is you'll get a step by step assistance in your preparation that means we have classes classes we will be having on weekdays okay monday tuesday wednesday and friday up to september we'll be going four days a week thursdays alone i'll be going to your senior batch for their main test discussion so i won't be able to come to your class so four days we are doing once your seniors complete their mains examination that is by september end they will be finishing they are starting on september 16 october onwards you will have five days regularly weekdays weekends i will not call you you can plan your reading on the weekends fine if in case there needs to be something extra to be done or whatever i'll try to manage it little bit before little bit after during those days only if in case i want to ask you something extra i'll give you just at least one week before itself i'll tell you so that you can rework or replan accordingly you can take it up okay so sometimes if the mains is reflecting some new trend i might want some extra classes to complete that trend so for that for safety sake i am telling you that i might call, but i will not call you on all days and all that i'll finish it within the limited time and uh, next is like say every two units that you finish then you'll be writing class test so class test will be like obviously on thursdays i will keep it because that day anyway you don't have class so you can get engaged in the test and for whatever unit is completed say 10 days time will be given for you to read and then you will be writing the class test okay so obviously we are starting on july 18th maybe by august mid we will be starting with the test whatever we are covering in the class based on that previously it will be told to you and then we will be having the test okay so after you complete the test test will all be for 1 hour initially i'll be training 1 hour making you to write four questions then i'll take you to five questions then i'll take you to six questions then i'll take you to seven questions because we need to complete six to seven questions in 1 hour because 19 questions we have to write in sociology and i can't create this magic in you know few months i need a years time with you and then only i can create that kind of a result okay so we will do it in a constant manner and once you finish the class test the class test papers will be evaluated there will be two mentors for you those mentors will be service candidates my previous batch students there will be they or they will be the interview students but who have cleared the i mean either cleared the interview or who have gone to the interview stage and who have got very good marks in the optional so three of us me and my students they will be we will be shuttling the papers within us and we will be giving you the feedback so once you write the test then you will be asked to fix up a time for the feedback and then the feedback will be given to you feedback will be one on one it is personally what you write based on that only the feedback will be given to you okay and we will be monitoring your progress like you, i you might have a problem in language another person might have a problem in concept understanding another person might have a uh, problem in like 
translating the concept onto the paper. So each person's problem will be different. So you can't have a customized thing. I mean, you can't have one thing, one custom package for everyone, right? So you need to make it like little different for every single person. So that will be done for you. So we will complete the classes by maximum December first week. We will complete. After that also, you will be continuing to write the test. So we will ideally finish five tests during the time of the classes. And after that, you will be writing a series of tests. These tests will go on till March. May 28th is your exam. So ideally, you come once in 14 days after the classes get over to write the test. And then this process will keep going on. So idea is one full round of optional you will complete before you go for your preliminary. And you will have two months time solid to sit and read. Obviously, you might need four months time to prepare for prelim, but optional little bit you need to keep writing practice. So for that sake, you will be coming say once in uh, you know, twice a month like that to write the optional test. All right. So this is what is the main writing practice. So this comes as a part of your training for the optional. We'll finish off all the class tests by the time we come to maximum by March. Clear? Then, yeah, these are the parameters which UPSC looks in. So, uh, these parameters help you to score better. So, evaluations will also be done on the same way. Starting initially, it will be done with content, relevance and all that. And then slowly that innovation and all those factors will be brought in. So, first step will be to build the content. And then to give sensible answers for the given question in the given time. Then rest of the things you have to work on you have to do some self practice also and that you should perhaps do it after your preliminary examination okay and yeah so. right now myths some myths are there isn't it always in student community we keep discussing this this option is better than that option this optional uh, uh, got this rank and so yes ranks are important we are writing it for a competitive exam but then uh, every optional has its own way of having its own results, okay? It's about the student's ability to perform in that optional. That's the only thing that you need to keep, keep in your mind. And that's what, that's all you have in the second point. All right. Now, in case you decide to choose sociology, what are the other things that you come with it automatically? One is in GS paper one, you have close to 85 marks. If this subject is not there for your preliminary examination. It is only a mains and interview thing that you have. Every optional that you take, it will be covered in two phases of the examination. Either some objects are there in prelim and main. Some objects are there in main and interview. Uh, this optional is there for main and interview. It is important for that. So GS1 you are having close to. They are asking six questions. One question which is like uh, along with post-independence history, which has a little bit of sociology connection. So you can say minimum 85 marks comes out of this. Essay writing, eight topics that they give, two topics, one in each section they come with sociology only. So if you have some content that you have built from this, you can easily build, use that for the essay as well. One thing that we do is here we'll say this thinker said it, another thinker said that. We'll drop the thinker's name and we'll just write what the thinker said. That That's how we convert our optional to the essay, okay? Why? Some terms, some names, it might be familiar to only that group of people. General studies means it should be understood by everyone. The evaluator might not be from sociology background. And there if you go and dump all the words there, you will literally kind of not impress the examiner, right? When you don't speak a common language, so that common language is Write sentences, but drop the thinker's names. That's all. Interviews, yeah. In interview, every single person, we get questions regarding our own district, regarding our state, regarding some national issues. Ideally, we get uh, uh, on in the five-member board, at least four to five questions come based on social problems. Sometimes we even get, uh, you know, hypothetical situations. They ask us to take, uh, you know, take a stand, they ask us to tell what will you do in this situation. They ask us questions like that. Case studies also we get. No? In uh, GS paper 4, 6 questions come from case studies. At least 2 case studies are sociology based. They are society based. You can easily make your course of action out of this. 
and state services examination if you take many states leave kerala and tamil nadu rest most of the states they have sociology as their optional paper it's similar to what you have in uh, upsc now ma'am i don't belong to that state can i write the state examination obviously anybody can write any state level examination provided you compete in general category you cannot compete in so a community might be an obc in that state that community might not be an obc in another state so i can go and write uttarakhand public service commission if i if i am going to compete in general category i can't claim an obc reservation when i go in there but yes i can do is it mandatory to know hindi to go and write there some some states they have language compulsory but majority of the states now what they do is after you get selected in that state's group 1 then within 2 years like how you have in this uh, upsc same way within 2 years you study the state language you can that is enough you just pass those examinations you can take up you finish your probation and you take up service so many state services examination for example karnataka public service commission west bengal public service commission uh, up public service commission they all have sociology as an optional subject so you obviously have the scope wider you can attempt for group 1 also there and these days after a couple of attempts we always look for backup right we kind of want to be very grounded and very practical so i prepare for the main examination but sometimes what happens is my prelim itself might be a roadblock for some time and my family situation might be in such a way that after a point of time i can't just keep pursuing only upsc for some it might be like that for some people it is very easy like first itself or second attempt you are like clearing in one shot you clear the prelim you start getting the hope but sometimes that gets delayed for people like i want to tell um two people whom i know personally one was a senior of mine uh he is mr sarvanan he is kind of placed in rajasthan right now in the ias cadre so he took six attempts to clear prelims and when he cleared prelims he was in ias okay similarly there is another person whom i know uh, her name is nikita boga she is right now in forest services telangana she got in civil services also in uh, irs so for her for three attempts prelims was only tough the moment she cleared prelims civils also came forest also came so sometimes prelims is a gamble you know you just come points when you are by that doesn't determine you or your uh, you know merit as a person so ma'am is that okay it's not always okay but sometimes you know that you've tried but somewhere that misfortune comes in right so in case there is some kind of a stagnation then obviously look for something which keeps us with upsc and we can come you know continue with our preparation like that if i'm going for going for some kind of a backup option we do have a lot of backup options as well that is recently from last year gate sociology has come up that means i can take up masters even if i do not have a background i am having some other background i clear the gate of sociology i can take up in iits i can take up post graduation in sociology and i can build my career in that itself once i complete my pg then i might get some jobs related to that some research work related to that that's possible similarly there is another scope that um, as in when we uh you know give gre or gmat with gre or gmat also we can get into um iits direct phd if we have an undergrad four year undergrad it's possible so like that there are many opportunities that are available today when you are going to take up for or going for some kind of an alternative and another thing that you will remember is in state services commission also in the general studies papers sociology is included like we have in uh like we have in gs1 like there also social issues are a part of it so it it is like comprehensive coverage only thing format will be different here we will be concentrating on explanation of points there state services will be tending to write many points within the given time the approach might be different compared to what we write here but the content what we make here it will be useful and of course there are some post graduation options that we have so some students they took up the post graduation option like for example atul kurkarri he is placed in ips maharashtra right now so he did uh, tata institute of social sciences urban urban studies and after he completed urban studies he got selected 
So he had to take a break for two years and then he was parallelly preparing and then he got in. So he was consulting with Nashik Corporation, uh, Nashik Municipality and then, uh, then he got selected into the UPSC. Similarly, there is a, a person called Anu Senapati. She is uh, from Kerala. She is in IAS Tamil Nadu cadre. She got 42nd rank. So she was pursuing her post graduation and then she had registered for her per first year PhD. That was the time when she cracked the examination and she got. So for her, it took a little more, took a little more than three years. So she started doing this and she still got selected. So it's not that you just leave your hope. So why I'm telling you all these things is generally people don't tell these things. And we start losing hope in between, right? So first, we'll always try to attempt, whichever attempt we give the first mains, we have to go into the final list. That should be our way of, we never prepare for prelims. We should always prepare to get into the final list. That should be the way. Prelims, first let me pass prelims, then let me start. What is the use? Can you put anywhere I pass prelims as a degree? Nowadays, you can't even tell people also. You cleared up. 13,000 people are clearing prelims. What is the big deal here? Yeah? Yes or no? That's how it is. And now with name also, they are putting the prelims list. So you simply can't tell people, I cleared, but I didn't go to the mains. I mean, I cleared prelims, but mains only was a problem. Everybody will find out whether you actually cleared prelims or not. Means you actually have to pass. Previously, you know, we used to have some people, right? Or what happens is like two to three years it becomes and then parental pressure starts. Come back, come back. Enough of studying. Right? So then, no, I've cleared one level. Let me, give me some more time. That Give me some more time to tell. First level I have cleared. Next level, let me go. Now you have to show proof for everything. Isn't it? So let's proceed in that direction of actually getting into the list. Fine. Okay, so these are the people. Of course, last year I did not take classes. But I had uh, some eight students from the previous batches who had cleared. One such person was Pratik Mantri. This year he had scored 280 marks. 2020 he was there. But last year I just, because I was on a break, I just corrected a few papers of his. But I can only show you 2020 uh, from that time. Last year I can't show you because I have not done work last year. So you know Meera, Jubin, they all had wonderful marks. So this is the highest that I have come till now. All India ranks sixth. So before that, I've not had any student and I hope one of you sitting here will be that who will take me to that AIR one. Okay, because with every success that you get, I'm also getting one step closer to my dream. So these are the people. They're anyway available in Shankar's website. So roughly 27 and then... 20, last, the previous year there were 27 people, then there were, pre, uh, before that there were 24 people, so we've had kind of very good results out of the people who have, so Neha, Neha is from IML, so she, uh, she was actually writing the exam for quite a, quite a while before she actually made it. Ashwarya, first attempt itself she got in, and uh, she got into IRAS and then she migrated to uh, IAS. So there are lots of people, you can find them on the website itself. Out of this, I think, yeah, Malavika is writing this year. You can see the names. Shakti Vel is also writing. Samir is also writing. So these are all the people I can just show you your seniors who have made it into the list. Obviously, each of these people are an inspiration. So this is what I have for you. These are all in the book that you get. All these names will be there. And whenever we look into that, Mera number. My number is going to be the next, right? That's how we think. This was my first batch, my 2013 batch, the first ever batch that I do. This is where, uh, you know,
from the class batch 33 students were there in that batch and out of that uh, these four got into service so that is when i decided that okay it was not that i didn't study that i didn't make it so maybe there was something else so that was the thing because missing out in the list was by two marks for me so it was kind of very difficult to accept you start entering into a self questioning mode right what have you actually gone wrong with but then when these people cleared then you know that okay so you are in safe hands don't worry about it i'll do everything possible from my side to help you out done okay so now it's for your questions yeah about your classes right 5:30 we'll start 5:30 you have to be in the class okay obviously if i am going to be late on some day i'll inform to you which rarely happens i try to be on time as much as possible because uh, sometimes there will be some um, you know weather issues there might be some network issues whatever be the case but it will be informed you will never delay classes we'll start on time uh, and uh, 5:30 when we start initially uh, five to ten minutes, we'll be just going through what we studied the previous day. Like we'll just have an overview, like these these topics. I'll not be doing it in detail. These these topics we have covered. Then we'll go to that particular day's portion. We'll do one half of that till say six fifty seven o'clock. Within that time, you'll get a break. You'll have a maximum five to ten minute break, and then we'll be continuing with the next uh, topic up to eight o'clock. This will be the plan. So normally, the way that we'll do it is 5:30. If I start till 5:40, uh, 6:45, 6:50, when we do the topic, after we finish that, all the questions that you have, I'll handle offline or online. We'll have it because in between the class, I might not be able to take your questions. Finish one topic, then take your questions. Finish the next topic, and then take your questions. And beyond eight, it is a little difficult for me to stay. So. maximum i might need time to say 8 5 8 10 after that i will i will not be sticking on here if there are any pending queries then i'll come the previous little earlier the next day and handle your queries and obviously we are going to have i'll give you my mail id we'll have the telegram group personally we are available here mentors will be available so don't worry about as much as possible try to uh, absorb maximum in the class and i will not dictate any notes in the class okay you will have to make running notes but this will be the pace of my speech printed material will be given to you so extra whatever you need it will be given to you whatever we are discussing in the class you make proper notes out of it as and when there is some topic which is actually very difficult for you to create there may be to show you how to handle answer writing that we will be doing so i'll tell you what will be the class plan so we complete a line of the syllabus then based on that line how the previous year they have asked the questions how to structure answers for that so i'll first orient you handhold you in the class how to do your introductions how should be your paragraphs i'll show you some demo uh, papers from how they have written those answers and then as and when you start writing obviously that will come to you so little bit of handholding will be done initially so that you get into the groove and then you proceed okay and uh, we'll have english as the medium of instruction uh inside the classroom outside the classroom if you speak, if you and i speak a common language you can definitely ask maybe two to three languages i might know or i might put you on to someone who can speak that language but primary mode of instruction would be english because we have students from various parts of india inside the class okay and when we go for upsc obviously we also need to escalate ourselves to what is a common language and for us now english is a common language so we are going with english Okay. It will be kind of similar to this only, like uh, that break time that I told you. No, that will be the time for the offline as well as the online. And for the online candidates, uh, anyway, like we, we'll, the paper evaluation, like students who are here, they'll be doing it. Uh, they'll be coming and they'll be getting the papers for the students who are online you scan the papers and you mail it and then based on the scanned paper a telephonic feedback or a zoom feedback will be given to you so i think process is the same 
but i would definitely want you like uh, you know at least once in a while to visit maybe monthly ones or something if you can visit any center i keep fleeting to all the centers so wherever uh, the center shankar center is there i'll be available at a stipulated i'll inform to you what whichever is the nearest place that would be the case uh so regarding the logistics i think you'll have to talk but i'll tell you my understanding uh normally uh, if there is a particular portion that is taught they have a stipulated period of time for the online candidates alone where they might have a portal through which the video is given uh the logistics regarding the videos of the classes you'll have to discuss it with the optional coordinator uh but yes it is available but it seems it's like of a stipulated duration of which i am not aware right now i know it on 18th of july only because they have to freeze the vendor through which they are going to give this normally when a student is online um we ask the student to post the questions on the chat box and the chat box will be visible to me and i'll take up the questions from the chat box whatever is not repeated in the offline class some extra question is asked i'll deal it after that so switching on the audio or the video might take a longer period of time so we use the chat box for that but seeing you i'll be seeing it you from here but asking the question if you if you switch on and off then it might take a longer time so we take the questions pile up the questions together and common questions i just take it up from the thing so that i'll do it at two intervals one the break time and one at the end of the class also so the books will be given to you two weeks after you begin classes and the books will will it will all be given to you at the stretch so first i think they will give you paper 1 unit 1 to 5 which i'll be dealing first and then they'll be giving you the rest of the books so normally it will be done in i think two times they will be giving you totally three books given to you at two different points of time so once they get an idea of how many people are there in a batch then they give it for printing so printing time will normally take 7 days so it will be that time that they will be taking to give ha huh. so once you come to class right uh, during the first day of the class hours i'll be talking to you in detail about whatever we studied i'll be orienting you like each topic what is the mark weightage what are the reference books etc we'll be discussing because now we have a group of people who might not even want to take up sociology so that that thing might not be relevant for them so for a relevant audience we will discuss that separately so i'll be talking to you about reference books everything okay reference books paper 1 we will go with just one book and paper 2 we will go with two books that is only reading extra reading but it is not like university wherein everything in the reference book will get repeated that's why the printed notes is given to you um it doesn't work like the university wherein from five units this book exactly it comes doesn't work like that so maximum what is getting covered like paper 1 we have a book called harry lumbos we use it in that harry lumbos also it is not a language which you can't understand it's a simple followable kind of language only paper 2 we go with indian authors but paper 2 that is the difficulty every line is a book every line in the syllabus is a book and we are going to write maximum four pages so sitting and reading one entire book to write four pages doesn't make sense no so we'll do that off in class and extra whatever you need we'll collate it and give it to you and uh, see there are certain things like current affairs which will be important right so as and when we do that topics we'll be integrating the current affairs like in today's orientation session i was talking to you about two three concepts no like that uh, whatever is important for that topic we'll be dealing examples and all we'll be dealing with right and uh, magazines we follow some magazines but synopsis of those magazines i'll be giving it to you and integrating that and giving it to you in the book itself other than that what is happening from this july that we will be doing in class so you'll have something with you solid apart from that you pick it up from the class okay so you asked about reference books class ppts whatever i use in class i'll be giving it to you in optional if i use a ppt you don't need to make notes of what is there in the ppt i will put it to you in the telegram group itself what you will make class notes is based on that so obviously if tomorrow i'm going to do some topic one week before itself i'll give you the ppt so in the class 
the interpretation from the ppt is what you will be doing you will not be making notes from the ppt i'll give everything to you there's nothing which i'll have which i'll not give it to you whatever i do in class i'll give it to you so don't need to worry about that giving it to you will be done through the group telegram group we'll be using that the same format of the question paper what is given in the offline the booklet which is given in offline we'll be doing it in white sheets with that upsc boundary the same thing will be given that question paper will be posted on the group as well so students will be taking the question paper from the group and they like the offline students write it on hard copy the online students also parallelly you will be doing it at that time normally i will give a window period because sometimes i have the test but students might fall sick or they might be working they might have college so i give a 3 day window period for people to complete the test because we have to keep that human element always it's exactly not rigid as the upsc that you don't go for an exam and so your candidature itself is not it's not like that so our objective is to learn so you finish the paper scan it and then you send it to a stipulated mail id which will be shared with you and we will take the papers from that and we'll evaluate it and call you for the feedback that's how it will be done okay the class timing is monday tuesday wednesday friday 5:30 to 8 pm after september it will be monday to friday 5:30 to 8 pm if in case there is a need for something extra it will be informed two weeks prior or maximum one week prior so regular is this will be the time that we are having so it is the same mentor who will be dealing with the offline as well as the online the slots alone will be different that's all yes you have to study because even if a student has eidetic memory eidetic memory is like chitti robo you see once everything comes to you some people are like that they have photographic memory whatever they see everything you can get some people pass university exams only because of that right so even if you have a memory like that the nature of questions whether it is general studies or essay or optional has a little bit of application so you need to tune yourself to think that means apart from the class hours you definitely need to spend sizable amount of time that means i think uh, you need uh, it depends upon every student's reading and comprehensive capacity but to complete whatever portions that is taught in the class during the weekends is something which is mandatory otherwise it will just pile up in the end easiest way is before every class test if you start preparing portions will just get completed automatically so you keep your uh, thinking like for every test i will study and write the test that way it makes it very simple yes you have to spend other than class hours to study it is needed it is needed for everything in ups see uh the class test program will take you in line with what is needed for the exam and after you finish this one round the next year there will be some main test series but that is not paid with this you will have to enroll separately for it but this itself is adequate for you to cover it because the mentorship and what you get if you do that itself it is automatically helping you to enter more and obviously we are not going to tell you don't bring answers other than whatever is there we are here to help you so you write and bring we will evaluate and give it to you whatever you help you need you ask we will do it and give but structuredly this is what i am offering this i can do i will definitely do extra whatever you want from yourself you have to tell your need so for students who have already opted for the subject until i come to me take your classes next week uh first you start going through unit 1 uh that is 11th standard ncrt there is something called as emergence of sociology
so this emergence of sociology is the first unit that we have you go through this in the 11th standard first ncrt okay so four books of ncrt are there 11th standard there are two books and 12th standard there are two books 11th standard books are for paper 1 and 12th standard books are for paper 2 okay so that's why those who want to decide on sociology i asked you to read this because this topic is common for gs1 also okay but those who have decided you first start with 11th standard in that if you take the index now remember whenever you read ncrt for uh, the upsc exam you don't need to read complete ncrt like that okay just take the topic see the index page whether that line is there in the syllabus only that you do don't do book by book it is of no use go unit by unit topic by topic whatever you are reading go like that okay so you go for 11th standard ncrt where you will find something like introduction to sociology like that will be there and another parallel uh, reading that you can do is download ba ignu sociology material it's a freely downloadable pdf okay Five PDFs will be there. It will be readily available. You download that. In that PDF, the same topic will be there. That you go through. Line by line in IGNU, they would have covered. Okay. Simple language you will be getting. Similarly, in YouTube, there is a video on intro industrial revolution. It will be a 24 minute video which gives you a complete understanding of industrial revolution twenty four some twenty four something okay I am not able to exactly recollect and it will be like in black and white with all pictures it will show you exactly what happened it's a very nice uh, movie kind of thing which tells you uh, about industrial revolution it has a lot of correlation to history also you read that it will commonly cover that and it will also cover a sizable 20 marker that you have in our optional also so you watch this uh, in this meantime so to read this and to go through this i think ideally one week time pakka you will have for it if many materials will be there just go with whatever is similar to what line you have in the first unit in the syllabus do that work start with that if you are doing the work this one week okay can you switch offline to online i think there will be some process to do that which means if you want to migrate from one thing to another you will have to approach the hr department and logistics should be done through the uh, uh, the optional coordinator it will be possible but they will have some formality or some kind of payment for that reason is when a student joins online they buy the space accordingly so if there is a migration then they will need to increase the license that they have for it so accordingly they will have to plan so they might have to any transition like that they might take but yes it is possible On social media, my account is this. That is, I think in Telegram, it is with an underscore. And any other space that you are using, I am only regular with Telegram. Okay. FB, Insta and all that, I am only once in a while. But yes, I am pretty active on everything. But uh, Insta, I am really bad. Uh, but uh, yes, I do check at least once a day. That I check. But if you are going to ask uh, academic queries, it's better that you please come to my Telegram or to this. Other than academics, you have nothing to ask me, right? That is, um, you will have to make running notes as and when I do the topics in the class. That will be the mode. There will not be dictation. Dictation, like say for definitions, I might dictate certain things. Like certain things which I would want you to replicate exactly. That I will be telling it to you. But other than that, like each and every point dictation, I will not be doing. Okay, 
done i think we have taken up all the questions if in case you have anything else please reach out all right thank you for your time we'll catch up on 18th of july monday 5:30 pm thank you